Hi, this is Mo for Redshift. Getting rid of noise is one of the main topics that you deal with when dialing in a render for final rendering. So what is it that's causing noise? When you look at this schematic view of a scene seen from a side and this is the camera and this is a light source, then a render engine in order to generate an image samples the scene and it does so by shooting out rays out of the camera, like here. Those rays are usually called camera rays, eye rays, or as in Redshift's case, primary rays. Let's look at what happens when a primary ray hits the scene, that means it intersects with geometry or lights. What a render engine and also Redshift does is, from that hit point, it generates secondary rays in order to generate effects such as interreflections or global illumination. And you can set up Redshift to either generate very few of those rays, as in this example, or you can set it up to generate lots of rays, which of course takes time to calculate and to shoot those rays around in the scene. So let's look at strategies to minimize the number of samples or the number of rays that we need to shoot out in order to get a clean rendering out of Redshift. So I set up this example scene in Houdini. I'm using Redshift for Houdini in the version 2.5.24. And what I did here is I have these pipes that are kind of stacked into each other. They have like these four materials on them. We have a petrol plastic, a pink plastic, silver, copper, and then for the background, a yellow plastic. And they basically work all the same. I just took the Redshift plastic setup, dialed in a different color and added a round corner shader. And what I did in this scene to begin with is I dialed down all the samples to a minimum value of one. When I set up my IPR window in the Redshift output drop, under IPR, I will just enable IPR progressive rendering and hit IPR in the Redshift tab up here. So my IPR pops up. And I can see now my viewport is progressively rendering the scene. Let me just right click on the window here and go to always on top. So I have it always visible. And the thing I like to do when dialing in sample numbers and setting up my renderings is I wanna switch off the progressive rendering in order to be able to judge the final image. Currently, this would be my final rendering, which is extremely noisy. So let's first look at the light samples. So when I go to the OBJ context, what I wanna do is I have these three lights here, an area light at the top, at the bottom, and a dome light for kind of an HDR environment. And I wanna switch off the HDR environment and also the bottom light so that I can dial in the lights individually. At the top light source, under the light tab, I can see that my samples for this area light, which is quite big, but the samples is set to one. So let me dial that up. And when dialing up samples, I found it useful to dial it up in the powers of two. That is because most computing algorithms are a bit more efficient when they are working with values that are powers of two. Nothing much happened here. So let's increase it to four. And we see it suddenly gets a bit better. Still very grainy, let's increase it to eight. Still grainy, so let's dial in 16. Let's try 32. 64. 128. Still grainy, so let's dial in 265. And we can see now the shadows start to get to an acceptable noise level, but it's still a bit grainy, so let's increase it to 512 something like this. And in order to get rid of the final bit of noise, let's dial this up to 1024. It's still a bit noisy, but acceptable for this single light. So let's switch off the top light and do the same thing for the bottom light and dial in the sample numbers. So again, let's try with two, not much changed, four and 265. And I would call this acceptable for this light. Switch this off. Now with my light dome, let me just enable this. I disabled effect diffuse and only switched on effect specular. So this only shows in the reflections. Yet those reflections are extremely grainy here. So in order to get rid of that, let's increase the light samples on our light dome here. Say to 16. And we see it's getting better here, or even increase it further to 32, even better. But still, there are those jagged edges here that annoy me a bit. And they look a bit like parts of the image that haven't undergone anti-aliasing yet. And this is one of the few cases that we can actually dial in with the unified sampler. So let's get to the output and to the redshift drop here. And under redshift in the standard settings, under unified sampling, 
let's dial in the minimum and maximum samples and increase the maximum samples to say 16. And we can see now these jagged edges start to disappear. Let's increase the max samples a bit further. And my jagged edges or jaggies completely disappeared now. And this is one of the rare cases that can only be dialed in or cleaned with the help of the unified sampling. Other cases include motion blur or depth of field. So let's go back to the OBJ level and switch on my top and bottom light again. In order to demonstrate the sample settings on the materials, let me just dial back the unified sampling settings to one again. So we have this very coarse rendering here and you can see those noisy areas here and they come from the reflection of the material. In our yellow plastic material, in the reflection section, let's dial up the samples to, let's skip the two, but let's dial it up to four. Not much change here. Now it's getting better with 16 samples. Let's increase it a bit further. Still better. Let's set it to 64. Now I still see those noisy parts in here in the copper and the silver. So let's head over to those materials as well, the copper. Let's dial in the reflection samples to say 16. We see now they're cleared as well. And let's do the same thing for the silver. I think they could use a few additional samples, so let's set them to 32 and do the same thing on the copper as well. Okay, let's go back to the output tab again and increase our min and max samples again. And this time let's only increase the max samples to something like say 64 and enable show samples. Because what makes Redshift so powerful, so versatile and so efficient is an algorithm called unified sampling and adaptive sampling. And what adaptive sampling does, it uses this threshold, this noise threshold to determine where to shoot additional rays and where to stick to a rather low ray count or low sample count. And when you enable show samples, Redshift renders this false color image that shows you where it shot many samples and where it only shot few samples. So the areas that are white in this image received the maximum number of samples, in our case 64, that is 64 primary rays from the camera shot into that pixel. And the areas that are black or very dark received only the minimum number of samples, in our case one. So let's disable this and let's set this to something realistic, for example 16 and 265. Now that this finished, let's just restart the IPR. So we have this old rendering saved here on frame one and on frame two, Redshift is restarting the rendering. So let's talk about what makes an image beautiful. Let's talk about global illumination, GI. And until now we just disabled it. What I like to do is set the primary GI engine to brute force. We can see up here, we get this additional light in here in the dark areas, but it's still very grainy. And again, to see the effect of the brute force race setting, let's just go to the standard redshift settings and again, set the sampling to only one primary sample. So we see now the GI is extremely noisy, extremely splotchy. So let's dial up the number of GI brute force rays here to, let's try eight. We can see it's getting better. Let's try 32. Still a bit grainy when you look at this area here. So let's try 128. Still a lot of grain. Let's try 512. And maybe even increase this to 1024. Like so. Just for this case, let's use brute force as secondary GI engine as well. And I already increased the number of GI bounces to eight. So we get this beautiful diffuse GI light in here. Let's go to the redshift settings again and dial up our minimum and maximum number of samples to something more realistic and let this converge. So now that this view finished, let's look at another perspective. So what I have here now is another perspective onto our geometry 
And as you can see, on the one hand, I set my min and max samples to one again. On the other hand, I disabled global illumination. And what I want to do now in the OBJ, I created a new camera in Houdini's sampling tab. I already set up a extremely small f-stop and a very small focus distance. So in the redshift tab, under depth of field, let's just enable the depth of field here. And you can see, we get a very grainy image of that beautiful depth of field that we are looking for. And the only way to adjust the sampling and the noise in the depth of field, as well as in motion blur, is in the output, in the redshift drop, in the primary samples actually. So we have to dial up these samples in order to get clean depth of field and motion blur. So let's do that and dial it up to 16 samples we can see our depth of field starts to clear. So let's set this up again to a minimum samples of 16 and maximum samples of 265. And you can see now the depth of field clears up a lot faster. So let's go to the GI tab again and enable brute force as primary and a secondary engine. And after a while we end up with this beautiful image with this strong depth of field, this nice bokeh, and I really like it. But as you can see, there still are some areas that are a bit noisy. There are two ways that we can deal with that. On the one hand, of course, we can increase our primary samples in here. On the other hand, when you look at those, those are specular highlights. That means those are samples or rays that after reflecting from a geometry, hit a light directly and have very strong light information in there. So they are very bright and thus cause this noise. Instead of increasing the sample numbers, what I want to do, I want to scroll down here and I find this, the maximum subsample intensity and the maximum secondary ray intensity. And what those sliders do is they allow you to clamp the intensity of incoming rays and incoming samples. So rays or samples that are past the given brightness are reduced to this brightness that I set up here. So now we accept rays that have a brightness information of four, which is a lot. So let's reduce them to say a maximum brightness of just one and see what happens. So as you can see now, without increasing the samples, we got rid of those grainy hotspots. But this came with a trade-off, so the image looks a bit darker now. So depending on your situation, you either want to clamp your samples or you just want to increase your primary rays, depending on what look you're going for. In this case, I think I like the bright look better. So I would increase the clamping again and increase the primary samples as well. Also worth mentioning is that if you do not want to dial in individual shaders or lights, you can always go to the sampling overrides tab in the redshift drop and dial in your samples for reflection, refraction, ambient occlusion, light, volume, single scattering globally. So for example, instead of tweaking each area light individually, I could just check override samples here and then set a sample count, which will then be taken for every light that is in the scene. Also, if you're kind of in a hurry and don't have time to individually tweak all those settings. What you can always do when you have the render power is of course just increase the minimum and maximum samples in the unified sampling tab and that automatically will increase secondary rays as well. Depending on the situation it might just not be that efficient but if you're in a hurry and don't have time for tweaking you could just resort to this. Now finally let's render some volumes and for that I created a volume in here by just using the spline and meshing this with the VDB from particles and then writing some noise in that volume with the volume bob here. I'm gonna pipe that out here and in my volume geometry in here, I just merge it here. And on the geometry, I make sure to have volumes enabled in the Redshift OBJ and make sure that my volume type is set to volume VDB Houdini primitive. Also in the materials, I created a fog material which should yield a pinkish noise here. In the output context on the Redshift ROP, Again, I set my sampling options to one primary sample, set my IPR not to use progressive rendering. Also, I disabled the GI for now. So let's hit render on this. And that took a while to upload to the GPU, but you can see here my noise is not really pink. It's just blocking out the areas where the noise should be. And that is because I have not set up my lights for rendering the fog and a fog volume. So let's do that in the OBJ and make sure this stays on top. So what I want to do in my main lights, the top and the bottom light, down here in the light tab, I have this 
the volume contribution scale and that's dialed back to zero for now. So let's dial it up to one for both the top and the bottom light here. And we can see suddenly in my rendering, I have this pinkish noise volume appearing. And you can see it's quite grainy still. That is because still the volume samples are dialed way back. So let's increase them to say something like 128 in the bottom as well as on the top light. And you can see now my noise clears. And this is a mistake I often make when using volumes and rendering volumes. I always forget to, on the one hand, enable the contribution scale on the light as well as setting up the samples. So keep that in mind when rendering volumes. So back to our output context on the redshift drop. Let's enable the GI again. So we now have this well lit smoke and fog volume. I think it might need a few more samples to get rid of the last bit of noise, but that's how you dial in the samples of volumes. So summing up in a nutshell, it does not make sense to just crank up unified sampling. It's just not efficient. It is better to adjust the sampling of lights, shaders, volumetrics and GI individually. And you can train your mind and your eye to actually see where the noise is coming from. And keep in mind that also clamping the maximum sample intensity can reduce noise in your image as well. And you can always use tricks like the show samples or using AOVs to diagnose where the noise is coming from. So in a nutshell, the unified samples, the primary rays, clean motion blur and depth of field. The light samples clean shadows and direct specular noise. The shader samples clean indirect specular noise. The GI samples clean the GI. And the volume samples clean the sampling of VDBs and volumes. So that was getting rid of noise in Redshift. I hope you're having fun using this engine and it's cheers and goodbye.